HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Somewhere out there, there's a man on a park bench eating his 500th PB&J. He has no idea Papa John's has new papadillas that are way better than a boring sandwich. With Papa John's best meats, cheeses, and veggies hand-folded into a crispy flatbread crust. Someone better tell that man. Get a new papadilla in one of four flavors for just six bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, better than a sandwich. Papa John's. Not valid with discounts, fees, and taxes. Extra prices may vary. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to gain recognition as a great resource for small business owners, sales professionals, business leaders of all sorts. Uh, And this is really because of the guests. Uh, These are folks who uh, have expertise in certain areas of business, and they join me to share that expertise with all of you so that you can get the information you need and do better things in your business. Today my guest is Brant Pinvidic. Brandt is an award-winning film director, veteran television producer, C-level sales and presentations coach, keynote speaker, top-rated podcast host, and a columnist for Forbes. He's been named to the Hollywood Reporter's 30 Most Powerful Reality TV Sellers and is widely recognized as one of the great creative sales leaders in Hollywood. His endless energy, quest for adventure, and the three-minute rule have helped make him one of the most sought-after C-level consultants in the U.S. and abroad. Thanks so much for joining me today, Brant. Very happy to be here. Love, that's an intro, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, it's now yours. I'm excited, yeah. <laughs> I should just take you with I me. Think- we, should, we should travel together. You should just go over where I go now. Hey, there we go. I can just introduce you everywhere. <laughs> I love, love it. that idea. <laughs> So I, I am, I'm just so thrilled that you are going to be spending some time with me and, and talking about um, just 
helping people sort of reframe, I will say, how they're thinking about pitching an idea. And because I, I just think we've been given so much information that uh, is possibly a little overwhelming. Um, and you say that simple is the new sexy. I, and I love that. And I would l- like you to tell the listeners how you came up with that and what do you mean by saying less to get more? Yeah, and, and I say it a lot. Simple is the new sexy and clarity is the new compelling and information is power. And it's because in a world right now where it feels like everybody is shouting, right? We've yeah. spent our last, I'm going to say 10 years fighting off the onslaught of marketing and messaging from every corporate brand and seller in the world, right? And as, a, as an audience, we've been now desensitized to any of the tricks and oversensitized to the aggressive tactics. And what you find is that people naturally think that if, they're, if there's, everything's so loud and people are shouting that they want to overshout and try to be louder. And actually what's working now is if you're not trying to compete by being the loudest, you're being the most direct, the most informational, the simplest version. It actually starts to stand out and people feel a level of confidence from that when you don't have to overblow everything you're saying or doing or trying to present. It's, it conveys a sense of confidence in the value of the information. And that's just really powerful right now. Wow. You are saying that. And I am actually thinking about people I heard recently uh, whose names shall remain anonymous who that's exactly what they were doing. They, they were being so in your face that, it, that it's like repellent. You, you just, you don't want to listen to anything they have to say. You just want to get away from them. And I talk about it in this sort of the, the myth of the elevator pitch, right? Is that we've been trained and we think that the idea is that you get in an elevator, metaphorically <laughs> speaking, and you say to somebody, I have the world's greatest software program that will save your business 50% on all their costs. And the person leans in and goes, ooh, tell me more. And it's like, <laughs> no, it's the total opposite now. Their first instinct is like, that's a load of crap. And I don't want to hear anymore. And even if you get them to listen, they're starting from a position of this is probably crap. And if you start with a grand statement, your audience is going to look to disprove it the entire time. Right. I am so glad that you're saying this. I I just, um, well, I'm pretty much finished writing my next book. And this is one of the things, and I say this all the time when I speak, let's stop calling it a pitch and a commercial because that's ridiculous. Yeah, and, and I say it an introduction. Yeah, and I say it all the time. Your actual goal is to translate your ideas to someone else's understanding. That's it. You're not trying to convince uh, them or persuade them. You need yeah. to get them to see your information the same way you do. And if they understood it the same way you did, then they'd have to be interested. And if you believe that truly, that's the way you would speak. And when you do that, it sends that message to the audience that you have that level of confidence, which is if you understand the information the way I understand it, you're going to be interested. So let me just give you the information. You'll get there. And that's so important. I just love that. It's about confidence. So if you're really confident, then you don't have to be doing the pitching thing. That's right. And that's right. Nobody's going to like, nobody wants to be sold. They want yeah, to right. make the decision for themselves. And they want to buy in. They don't want to be sold. And I, and I have this great yeah. analogy that I do on stage with um, a friend of mine, Gordon Ramsay, very fancy chef. And I say like, imagine if you wanted me to cater your wedding and I came to, to tell you that I was going to get Gordon Ramsay to be the chef for the night. Like how many words would I need to sell you on that? What would I need to say? <laughs> you know, it's like, I basically have four words. Yeah. I have Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. Or versus a, you know, A family member who was married to a cousin of mine, just got out of jail, never cooked before, but really wants to get started in the business. How would I have to sell you to let him do the cooking for your wedding? Like how many words would I need? I'd need a ton and I'd be trying to sell you it the entire time. Well, your pitch is probably somewhere between Gordon Ramsay doing your wedding and the ex-con. And the more words you use is directly proportional 
to your level of confidence. And that's just what the audience feels. The more you talk, the more you try to explain, the more you try to sell, the yeah. less confident you appear and the more, that's like you said, great. repelled they're going to be. Yes, that is great. That is great. I usually say the more you talk, the less they're listening, but I really right. like that. You know, right? The more you talk, the less confident they are that you have something that they really need. It's so great. Oh, I, I just, I, I love this. So what is this whack method? Am I even like, should yeah. I be just saying the letters or no, what is no, it's, it's the, it's that it's an acronym. So basically what happens is, is and that's how the three minute rule came about is ah, it's, okay. it, it meant to help you get through people's initial decision-making forming, right? If I'm going to present anything to you or I want something from you, you're going to make a decision about whether you want to engage with me within the first three minutes for sure. But as your audience is going to be thinking like they've probably done it within the first 30 seconds, 15 seconds, sometimes 10 seconds. They know I don't, you know, I'm not interested. And that's because as we process information, we conceptualize the information. What is it? And then we contextualize it as in how does it relate to us? And then we actualize, do I want to engage? Now, if you're lucky and if you do it well and you use some of the Hollywood storytelling techniques I, I walk through in the book, you can extend that decision-making process for an entire three minutes, which is like an eternity. But it gives you the chance to get all your information that's really valuable in. And I help people put it into this whack categories. W is what is it? Simply put, what's the concept? How does it work? Are you sure this is where you use facts and figures and logic and reason to verify your statements? And then can you do it? Like, what is the actual, you know, actualization? How do I make it real? And if you put your information in those four categories and feed it to your audience, you can lead them almost like breadcrumbs of information and they will start to form the basis, the foundation of understanding which will help your concept get through. And that's when they can make a decision if they want to engage further. And that's really the best you can do is give them the most valuable information before they make a decision. Because trying to do it after they've decided they don't want to engage with you is yeah. really, really hard. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's so great. Okay. <laughs> I just love this. So what's one of the craziest pitches that actually worked? Um, you know, I tell the story in the book, which is kind of interesting. And I was developing the idea, which later became extreme makeover weight loss edition. And we had been doing the biggest loser. And I had this great idea of how to do it bigger and longer and better and more impactful, but I could not explain it to anybody outside of my development office, my development crew. We knew the show and it was perfect when we talked about it, but I'd bring in people from the outside of the company and I'd go through the pitch and it was about you know, 17, 18 minutes long total. And every single time people were like, so confused. They asked questions in the middle of it while I'm trying to explain it. It was just going nowhere. And, you know, normally these things took us a couple of weeks to finalize. And this is like, we're going on months and I've been spending money and we're not even close to finished. And I knew it was such a great idea, but I just couldn't get it there. And that's when we actually started doing this post-it note bullet pointing, trying to get our idea of what order we should be talking in. And, and as I was sitting in this room, in this conference room, I was looking at maybe a hundred post-it notes on the walls of all the bullet points. And I just saw these core pieces of information, the core concept just sitting there in these one and two words things. And that's when I went to like I went to this other place where I saw it, like I'm overcooking this idea. So I called the network president and just said, I need to drive over there right now. And I need to tell you the show. And everybody in the company was like, you're crazy. We're not ready. And I was like, Oh no. And I literally promised him I could do it in five minutes. I just need five minutes of your time. And he let me in and he looked at me with this crazy look. Like, I can't believe I'm letting you hear. And I, I literally just said, like, we take people that are too big for the biggest loser. We're going to follow them for an entire year of weight loss. It'll be the largest weight loss in TV history each and every single episode. And I just like laid it out so cleanly. And I was out of his office within five minutes and I got a 10 episode order and it changed the entire dynamic of my company and my career. And it was on a, a pitch that lasted less than five minutes, which I'd never, I'd never done that before. I'd never experienced that. And it was so crazy, like something that could work. I just couldn't even believe it. <laughs> it's so great. And, and you said earlier um, 
something about clarity. And and that's really what you came to, right? You yes. you just got really clear about this is what it is. And well, I also that thought, made it easier for you to explain. But it was like, it was clear about what it is, but I was also started to develop clarity about what my audience was going to understand. Like, and I say a lot uh, that the, the, your story from A to Z does not need every letter of the alphabet. And that's what I've been doing traditionally is I was explaining every element of the show and every reason that it could be great and how it was going to work. And I really wasn't taking into account that my audience is the network presidents understand TV probably better than I do, certainly for their network. So why am I explaining things that they're going to come to the idea on themselves? They could be working in my job. And if I gave them idea, they would develop it as well. So I didn't need to fill in every single blank. I just needed to get the concept out super clean and easy, how it was going to work and why it was going to work. And, and that was it. And it started to work so quickly. And I was able to sell so many more shows and develop them so much faster. It was totally life-changing. Wow. It sounds like it. It just, it, it, it's making it simple. Yeah. And I, and when I started wow. working with oil and gas companies or biotech companies that have such complex elements to their business, I was really nervous because I was like, I, I don't know if this works for them, yeah. but it yeah. was the same process. I was be, I huh. was able to make monumental changes in their business structure and the way they presented themselves. And sometimes I didn't know the words that they were using as I didn't understand gene therapy for type one diabetes, anti-rejection drugs, like, right. but it didn't matter because laying the information out in a succinct core pattern was always working regardless of what the information is but by trimming everything else out and just getting to the core of it it was so much more powerful and it was so much easier it was so much easier than what they were doing already yeah it sounds like it i think so many people try and complicate so many things yeah and that's really because you live with your information and you know it so oh. well and in your mind it's so perfectly clear and i mean listen all cards on the table. I had problems with this writing my own book and I'm an expert at this so-called. So when I was writing the forward for, to the book, the introduction, I had this great idea where it's like, hey, the average business book the intro is 14 pages long, yet the average reader decides if they're going to read a book in the first four pages. So my intro was going to be like, hey, I have to convince you to read the rest of this book in four pages, which coincidentally takes you about three minutes. So I was really excited about that. And the first pass when I wrote the intro was nine pages long. And so I was like, oh my goodness. Like, so I tried to cut it down. I got it down to seven. And there was a time when I was like, well, you know what? This intro is so good. And what I'm saying is so valuable that, you know what? It, it can break the rule. It, it can be seven pages because it's just that good. And I was like, what am I talking about? Like... <laughs> This is nuts. So I had to start from scratch, pull out a set of post-it notes, go to my office, put the post-it notes on the wall like I would do any idea for my own book. There's actually a picture of the book of me doing this. And uh -huh. even then, I did get it to the four pages. I'm really happy with it. But some of the information I thought was so well-worded and so clever, I actually pushed it to the first part of chapter one. And we actually sent out galleys, those first rough prints, of that book with that in there. And, and I was reading it one day and I like had this, these horrible panicking sweats as I was reading, realizing, oh my God, the first two pages of my book are horrible. The first chapter, the first two pages are absolutely awful. It's useless information that is just for fluff because I loved it so much at the time. And I actually had to call the publisher and have them take it out. We had to redo the typesetting. And now the new book of course has its, and it's perfect, but my own book. That's how difficult it can be to separate wow. yourself from information that you find so valuable because you've been living with it for so long. And if you use wow. the process in the book, you can actually find out what is valuable now, valuable later. What should be in your three minutes, what should be after, wow. that kind of stuff. Wow. This is, wow. It, I know I keep saying that, but it's, it's, it's uh, so interesting to me because it, um, it, probably because I am in the middle of writing my book, but that you, I, I think it's so important for people to realize that we are so with our 
stuff that we have, it feels like, um, a warped view of its value as it pertains to whoever's going to buy it. Yeah, and it's not, it's not so much the warped view of it. It is, but it's also like with the understanding of it comes value. With, with the clarity comes the value, and you want to give those valuable pieces to others, but without their understanding, they can't give it the same value. And yeah. so what I work on is trying to show huh. people how to lead with a story of your information so that people find the same value you do so that the information you find so valuable, they'll find valuable. Oh, okay. Interesting. So can you give me an example of that? I love this idea. I love this idea of leading with the story because people can relate to stories, right? Isn't that the value of them? That they see themselves in the story. Well, it's also like it's a story leads you piece by piece, right? Like the, if you look at one of my favorite movies, Shawshank Redemption, it's like the movie doesn't start out with him trying to escape because you wouldn't give a crap. You have to watch Andy Dufresne go through all of these elements, understand his journey, get all the valuable pieces of information about the character, about the system, about the world he's in, so that by the time he decides to escape, you are cheering and rooting and you want it desperately and that's the core of hollywood storytelling we lead with information to get to the conclusion we don't give you the conclusion then try to prove it we don't state it and then prove it we inform and then lead and that's what you'll find with information and if you when you go through the book you can see how you can use the information that you have about your product business or service to lead people to get to the conclusion that you want, as opposed to force feeding them the conclusion you want and then trying to back it up. And that's sort of a big distinction. Yeah, no kidding. Wow, I I think this is huge. (laughs) I hope so. (laughs) I I, Seriously, I know, right. (laughs) Yay, it's working. Um, I'm gonna pivot slightly because I am so, fascinated by this as well and have my own opinions on it um i'm curious about when if you think people should use powerpoint in a presentation and if so when and how um you know i kind of hate powerpoint uh, Me too. because okay. it ruins it ruins it for a lot of people so in the book i have sort of my 10 commandments of powerpoint And I sort of make the joke that you should follow these commandments as if they showed up to you with a burning bush and tablets from (laughs) somebody on high on a mountain. Like, and, and it's crazy because I've worked with, you know, multi-billion dollar companies that make horrifically terrible PowerPoint presentations because they take their slides that they want to hand out later and they put them on a screen and speak to them. Right. And so there's a lot of information you can get out there in the world about making great PowerPoints. And most of it is correct. But what I say and what I really try to work with people in is like, how do you make the PowerPoint help your story as opposed to speaking to it? It's like it becomes the augmented piece to you. It's, it's what the picture is to a thousand words, right? And what I've been able to do relatively successfully is show companies who would normally, and you know, CEOs that would not normally be comfortable with that how to use what they're putting up on a PowerPoint to accentuate the story they're telling, the information that they're giving out. And, and I sort of all say, like, it's better to just put up a graph without the numbers and the details just to show the arc of it. And then you speak to that and you can describe it. That way people will pay attention to what you're saying and they won't be fixated on reading things in front. So PowerPoint is, a, is, is powerful if it's done right. It's just, it's far more important to work on your presentation at its core before you do anything else. Because I've had a lot of companies come to me and ask me to fix their PowerPoint and their presentation because to them, it's like, that's a design issue. That's like an easy fix, right? Like they can just, we just need a better designer and someone to redo it. And it's like, nope, you got to start with your information. Once we get that, how you present it becomes much less important. It, and I've never worked with a company that had spectacular information clearly laid out and wonderfully put together and an ugly PowerPoint, (laughs) right? It's the other way around. Beautifully designed PowerPoint with great transitions and cool color palettes. And literally, I don't understand what it is you're trying to say, or 
you've yeah. got, you know, you got 212 words on one slide kind of thing. Those mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Makes you just want to scream. Yeah. <laughs> and no one in the audience likes it either. Cause I think that goes along with really being able to, to speak in a way that connects with your audience. Audiences can't stand it. No. So you lose them the minute you pull the thing up. Yep. And I, and I said, like, if nobody wants to see another PowerPoint presentation, what does that tell you? Like I said, but if there are things in there that really help you, like, listen, I use it when I'm on stage because it makes my jokes funnier and it makes uh -huh. the phrases. But when I do a PowerPoint, I'm not even kidding. I literally use simple black and white text. I don't do any fancy. I mean, listen, I have a graphics team that I could employ to do anything and I don't use any of that. I literally do simple black and white text, usually a couple of words at most because it's, the PowerPoint is following me. It's guy. It's, it's my, yeah, right. it's, it's helping me. It's not the other way around. I don't speak to right. me. It speaks to me. And I tell the audience, this is when you look at the slide and this is when you listen to me. And here's this, like, I'm really directive of that. And, and I, and I show people sometimes like, I'll just put a blank screen up there for a while. If I'm speaking, I don't have to have a slide for everything I'm saying. I'll just put the logo back up. And I have companies that I, that I, when I train, I show that it's like, you don't have to have anything here. You can just speak to this. You don't need anything. Just put the logo back up. It's like you, that's a really core, really valuable technique, which is I tell you where to look as the audience. Wow. I've never considered that. Yes, indeed. Huh? That's really interesting. I saw someone the other night, like the screen go black for a little while and I think it left everybody wondering, was he done? And then something would come up. I and mean, it was lengthy. It was, it, it was a, quite the pregnant pause. So it was a little unsettling. Well, and listen, it's, it, it obviously it takes some practice to get it right. But yeah. like I said, the first, first and foremost is get your information in its course. Sometimes I'll go pitch a TV show now and I won't bring anything with me. I will just... Right pitch the idea because I know my audience understands the basics of television and how these ideas work. I just need to get them understanding it totally up to speed on the concept, totally up to speed on how we're going to produce it and why I've come to this realization about the show. And then we can talk about whether it fits for their network. And that has been just so like, it's been so overwhelmingly successful yeah. and it's, you know, TV is a tough market, but and it doesn't work. Sometimes they understand the concept. And they're like, oh my God, we love this, but it doesn't fit our brand or it's not the kind of thing that will work on our air. That happens all the time. But I've yeah. also had in early in my career, lots of times where I leave the room and I don't think the network understood the idea properly. And you only get to pitch NBC one time. I can't call NBC and be like, oh my God, I, I want to come in and pitch you that idea again. I got a better way of explaining it. Like that's, that doesn't happen. You get one shot. So first and foremost, they need to understand it perfectly. And like, that's the core of the message. Get your audience to understand what it is you're offering and how it works. Let's start with that. That's half your battle. Yeah. Yeah. I really love this because that, of course, that's how Hollywood is. That's how anybody is, right? You're taking their time. You have to be able to connect the dots as, seamlessly as possible you get really one shot at it because if because doesn't it seem like if you wanted to go back and re-explain that you were doing that thing where you were talking too much and explaining too much and you're losing them yeah again yep. yeah yeah okay I, I just this is this is really such great information i'm going to take a quick sponsor break and then i want to continue it Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Your Oxygen Mask First by Kevin Lawrence and Breathe to Succeed by Sandy Abrams. So visit audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth 
explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with Brant Pinvidic about saying less to get more. So, um, do you have, I guess I'll call them tips, for people who are listening for um, coming up with a good hook? And, well, and when do they put that in their three-minute pitch? Or, or should there not be a hook? I mean, what? Oh, no, the, what, the, the hook is a core element to what I teach for sure. Okay. But traditionally, we've been taught to use the hook right up, at, right up front, right? And I'll, I'll give you the example of when I sold Bar Rescue with John Taffer, who was a great personality. The hook of the show is John Taffer is going to be the next Gordon Ramsay. He's big, he's loud, he's going to be an amazing character, right? Now, a lot of people would have thought you walk into the room and you say, you know, basically good news. I've got the next Gordon Ramsay. Right. And that's the problem with that is that's a grand statement that the audience then looks to disprove for the rest of the pitch. So my goal then would have been to overcome their objection. Cause I'd be like, really the next Gordon Ramsay. Right. Whereas the hook of your pitch should be something that the audience almost thinks on their own. When you get there, you should almost not have to say it. So when I walked through John's history, when I was able to show that he has this, he has a scientific background of the way nightclubs and bars work, that he's got the goods and the history and understands the business more than anybody else. And he's so passionate about it that he takes it personally and will not let sort of bad restaurants and bars and nightclubs get away with things at customers' expenses. And when you see him do what you do, you can't help but start to think, oh my goodness, particularly if you're a network, he might be the next Gordon Ramsay. So ah. the idea is to go through your, your pitch, your presentation, whatever it is. And the, the piece of information that, that aha moment for you that makes it sound like in your world that is the most valuable conclusion, right? You pull that out and you save that. And then you start building, using the WAC method, exactly how you get there. How would you get someone to say that on their own? What information would they have to have so they came to that conclusion on your own? So if you said, what do you think? They would basically have the information to come back to you with your grand conclusion. And that's a really powerful thing called inform and lead, whereas we've always been state and proof. And if you can do that, you start to see how that hook becomes a weapon for you to use. Wow. Inform and lead. Yes. You don't want to state and prove. That's old yeah. school marketing techniques. Hey, I'm going to show you a big, fat, juicy burger, tell you how to get it. I'm going to tell you, you can lose weight and eat anything you want. And here's how. Well, guess what? People don't believe you anymore. So right. that system doesn't work. I get it. Okay. Now, is it possible to take negatives and use them to our advantage? It's not only it's possible, it's imperative at this point because Really? The, yeah, because the idea that your audience isn't going to pick apart your idea or come up with the things that are negative about it is you're living in a fantasy land if you think that. Because Everybody's going to be looking for strings. Everybody's going to be looking for issues, right? And traditionally, our pitches and presentations have all been sunshine and roses. So we've been trained as an audience to be slightly skeptical and really sort of analyze things. So what happens is, is if they sense that you're hiding something or that you've skipped over something, that's going to repel them. And they, they loathe that. So I give my clients sort of the three options. There are three options when I ask them the question, what do you hope? your audience doesn't find out. What do you hope your client doesn't ask you, right? When you're done your presentation or your pitch or whatever it is you're trying to convince someone, ask the question to yourself, what do you hope their first question isn't about, okay? Because there's only a couple options. One is you bring it up and solve it in the course of the pitch. That's A. B, your audience brings it up and then you have to come solve it. Or C, which happens most times, Nobody talks about it. It never comes up. You go away thinking you've got it, you know, over them. They go away, try to figure out this negative thing that they've already been thinking about the entire time. Sometimes they're thinking about it while you're pitching. So it's really important 
to own those negatives, whatever it is, because if it was, if it was a deal breaker, then you wouldn't be in the situation pitching it, right? Because it would have been a deal breaker for you. So why do you think it's going to be so bad for the audience? It's not. And, you know, I learned this with John Bon Jovi when I was pitching a show with him and he asked me to breakfast and I was so excited to go to breakfast with John Bon Jovi that like, I didn't even see the warning signs of why he wanted to meet. I just was like so excited because we were pitching the show like the next day. And he basically said at breakfast, I can't do this. Like we built this entire show about me, you know, what would I be doing if I wasn't a rock star? I would have been a landscaper. And he's like, that's just not true. I would never would have done that. I had no other thoughts, but music my entire life. And we built this entire show around this and it doesn't work. And I was just like, Oh crap, we're pitching tomorrow morning. And I've got the star of the show. Who's agreed to be in the pilot. Who's going to be in the room. And I'm going to try to pretend like he had an alternate idea for life. Like that's crazy. Why was I trying to do that? I don't know. But in that moment, I realized I didn't have any other choice but to bring it up in the room and hopefully just talk right through it. And so I remember the pitch exactly. We were there and I literally brought it up. I said, I said to the head of ABC, John, here's the problem. His name was John too. John ABC guy, <laughs> here's the problem. Bon Jovi's never thought of doing anything else but being a rock star. So the idea that he could be a landscaper or work at a pizza place is kind of fabricated. And so it might come across to the audience that we're, making it up and maybe even making fun of them as regular people. And I would have never said anything like that in a pitch ever in my life, but I knew that it would like at least let John Bon Jovi know that I was serious. And like, I considered his objections and the network, John, that, you know, I was super confident with the show and, and that we could solve it. And the network literally was like, Oh, I don't think that's such a problem because of this, this, and this, and this could be some real moments. And we worked through that. And I was like, wow, that was amazing. And I started to adopt that formula in everything I, in every pitch I was making. And I I would go to the development office after the John Bon Jovi pitch. And I said, Hey, bring every show in and answer this question. Why is the network going to pass? And I tell you, I could not believe how fast everybody in the development office said what the problems were. They knew them the whole time. Nobody was talking about them. So I started to incorporate them in the pitch. And I would say to the network, I'm not sure we can cast this show. It's very narrow. And if we don't get the right cast, I don't think the idea works. And the network would be like, I don't know that that's true because even getting a good cast is going to work and here's why. And it was like, okay. Because then they knew that I believed in everything else more than this one issue. I was confident enough to bring it out with them. And so it's changed the way I look at what you consider a quote unquote negative. If it's something the audience is going to ask, you're better to deal with it in the moment. It says a lot about you and it fixes the idea. And it gives you real insight into how serious they are about finding a way to work with you. I mean, I'm listening to those stories thinking they really wanted to do something. Yeah. So they and were it wasn't, willing it wasn't to do that like, conversation. It's not a deal breaker. That's all there is to it, but it can be a deal breaker. If the audience thinks you're hiding it, if your customer thinks you're hiding something, you're done. You are done. And this happened to me with lots of clients, especially in the investment world where you've got public companies or companies looking for investment and pitch was great. Everything was great. But then I'd ask the, you know, the audience, I'd be like, what's the details? And they would like, I think he's hiding something. I think that debt to income ratio is not really what he's saying. And that means Everything else he said is completely discounted. And I was like, oh my God, that's terrible. So I'd, I'd have them start their presentation sometimes with like, hey, you'll notice on page three, blank, 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 here's why blank, blank, blank. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, you've diffused that situation, which is a far more powerful position to take. Now, I'm guessing that you have to be able to say that very confidently. There's really almost no other way to say it because again, if it was such a downside and such a deal breaker, you wouldn't be there. Like, True. so you, you, as the person who's championing this idea, you've obviously worked your way through these negative issues or these problems or your competitors or the price issue or whatever it is, you've somehow worked your way through it. Why? It's because you have lived with the information and you understand it and you know the solution. So I got an idea. Why don't you let your customer or your audience go through that same process? Not going to be hard they'll get there. Wow. This is remarkable. 
Is there a way um, to use the three-minute rule, like when you're communicating outside of work, like in your personal life? That's an interesting thing because I have been – I've been surprised how well it's helped me in other areas of my life. And it's not like I'm at the grocery store or having a discussion with my wife and I stop and pull up my bullet points and get my statements of value <laughs> and go through the whack method. But there is something about the idea of the way you can simplify your information and the confidence that comes with believing in the way people understand and rationalize ideas. And when you understand that core concept, it allows you to let your information stand a little bit more on its own. And if you notice how, you know, and I talk a lot about it, if you're, if you're in a fight with your significant other, you'll find yourself trying to say it loud, say it often and say it better. And it's because that's why you raise your voice. That's why you say the same thing over and over again. And that's why you try to say your same argument in different ways, right? Because your passion comes out and you feel if you shout louder and say it differently, that that's how you're going to get your message through. And once you go through this process of the three minute rule enough, you start to realize that, oh, it's more powerful to let your information stand on its own and let it do the work. And, I'm, and I, I use that in my day-to-day life, my children are incredibly good at it now. My son uses it against me, like it feels like daily. <laughs> Every time he wants something and he wants to ask me something, he knows how to play it. He knows how to do this. And he's like, and he's really good at it. And he doesn't, have to, he doesn't have to oversell it. He knows here are the core elements. Hey dad, I want to take the GTO to the dance. Here's why. And next thing you know, he's driving out with my 1969 Pontiac GTO. <laughs> Every single time, because he's got me. Wow. That's, this is just uh, so great. Okay, so if someone's listening and they're thinking to themselves, I mean, I'm going to flip it back to business for a second. If they're thinking to themselves, um, okay, I, I don't necessarily even know where to start. Is, is there like a process to go through, like a step-by-step thing to start crafting a three-minute pitch? Yes, absolutely. A, a foolproof method that you can that you will get to work every single time. First, you go to the website three minute rule dot com and you buy my book. That's the first thing. Is you get I was the book. Say that. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> you get the book and you read the book. It's right there. That's exactly how to start. But for the right. for those who are going to buy them, I'm sure everyone will buy one. So I'll tell you what's going to be in there. A little preview, but it shows you how to start with breaking it out into bullet points and simple one word or two word bullet points of your idea. And you'll see that I have exercises where I literally put 25 bullet points, one and two words about a company you've never heard of before and you have no idea who they are. And by the end of those 25 bullet points, you're like, okay, I know what that company does and I know why it's good. And I do it in a show. I show, here's the TV show that I sold to NBC. <clears throat> Let me show you it in 25 bullet points. Bring. When you're talking about one or two word bullet points, you know, hosted, you know, live studio audience, uh, children competing, like it's so basic and you can't believe how much information you can get out of that. And so that's the first step is to just bullet point, take a marker, grab some post-its and start bullet pointing them. Then I show you how to take them into statements of value and expand those and then how to put them through the whack filter and then then you can figure out what comes first, what comes next, and what comes later. And it all builds really easy from there. I show you how to do an intro and how to get out of these things. I show you the hook and the edge, what I call the edge of your story and how to use a lot of really cool, like the callback feature that you would use in a comedy show. I show you how to use that in a pitch. Like those things come easy after you've started from that very basic, here's the bullet points of what you want to say. I just, I love this so much. Will you, um, I cannot wait to go get that book. Will you yeah. tell the listeners how they can get the book and find you? And I mean, I know it's on Amazon, but will you tell them? Yeah, I think, I think it's really like it gears up starting right away here. Um, so if you go to three minute rule.com, um, you can get the book and lots of, I have lots of cool other things that I'm doing there to help people. There's sort of this say less to get more movement that I'm really excited about. And if you want to sort of join in that I'm, I'm doing live streams and lots of fun stuff to help people. I, I kind of, I'm addicted to this process. So you can go there. You can see my website is brantpinvidic.com. 
all my other elements are there. So that's the easiest to connect to me and get that book. No problem. Uh, and I'm on all of those social medias at, at Bram Pimvidic. So I love talking to people, love helping people. I would love to help anybody that's listening to, to say less and get more. So I encourage people to sort of engage and send me stuff. I do too. I do too. I think this is great. I think the more it, it, it feels to me like you are on this crusade that I totally support to get people to stop yelling at me um, <laughs> everyone else and be very clear in their message and what is what's in it for the other person and so yeah. I think this will help so many people who struggle with that which is I think is unfortunately way too many people yeah and, and I'm just I'm so happy that I've been able to sort of quantify it into yeah. practical application because of that I never I didn't realize I was going to be able to do that I've been working with sort of like high level companies in 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 the biotech world and and these you know high level ceos and i sort of thought that that was where i would you know deliver the most value and it wasn't till i i worked with a plumbing contractor that i was on a ski trip with and mm -hmm. i saw the same frustration in his face that i had seen so many times of he believed in his product and the way his business ran so clearly but he just couldn't get it out so others understood it and I, I, I watched as I, as I did the same process for him as I did for a television show, as I did for a biotech company or an oil and gas research company. And it was like, oh, the, the process is the same. It doesn't matter what the information is. And, you know, I, I, just watching people go through the process and, and the joy they feel when they can make others understand their ideas the same way they do is so rewarding. I'm, I'm kind of addicted to it. Yeah, <laughs> you should be. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Yeah. And, and like I said, so incredibly needed. I, I can totally relate to that plumber. Yes. Oh, I get I, it. You it's know, so frustrating. Yeah, it is. And I, and I like to see, and it's funny, I say like, you know, when this happened the first time, when one of my first clients, he left me this voicemail and he was almost in tears. And he was like, you've changed my life. And I used to hate going on the road and trying to present to investors. And now I'm excited yeah. and the stock's up. And I was like, no network president has ever said anything like that to me before. And, you know, I make the joke that it's like, well, I'm so driven by ego that like, that was pretty nice to have someone say that to me. And, <laughs> you know, so it's like, hmm, I'm, I'm one of those sort of like insecure kind of narcissistic kind of guys who likes to be important. And next thing you know, I'm like traveling around trying to be that way. And I, I say it a little bit better now. It's like, I like to help people and I like to reach out. But truly, yeah. I'm kind of addicted to the idea that like, I can be important and change people's perspective on what they do. And it's like, that's hard to get away from. Like it's, it's hard to not want to do this every day. I'll bet. I'll bet. I totally get it. Why not? It makes such a difference. And interestingly, I mean, what I'm hearing and, and can really resonate with this, it's really great to help people who are really appreciative of the help. That, yeah, that really, absolutely. you know, it really is life changing for them. Yeah. And I've worked, I've worked with a lot of companies like that, where it's like, part of me is saying like, wow, like, I don't really have to do that much. Like you guys have done all the work and they're mm -hmm. just like, oh my God. And, and, and they're just yeah. screaming with joy because it's like, they finally get to say it the way that people will understand it. And yeah. there's something about watching or hearing or going through someone's sort of first pitch after I work with them, which is like, it's so exciting. It's like, I don't know. It's just an exciting process because they know their information so well. And just being able to convey it clearly and concisely and accurately is just like, it's a joy. It's a joy to watch. Yeah. 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 And be part of it's, it's a great thing. Absolutely. It is wonderful. So uh, thank you so much for spending time with me and sharing this Absolutely. information. I know it, it's so valuable for the listeners. Listeners, I mean, you, you heard it, you get it, uh, you know, get, get the book. Um, this is something that's really, really important. And simple is better, right? Clear, yeah, yeah. succinct, it's, it, it's all good. Yeah. Uh, and I would also like to thank our sponsor, to get a free trial of audible.com as well as a free audiobook, just go to audibletrial.com slash business growth to sign up. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, 
Goodbye and good day. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, Powder Donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Are you tired of the same old productivity hacks? Have you read the top 20 books on effectiveness and yet your work days and email inbox still causing anxiety, burnout, and even depression? Ready to learn the latest in brain-based modalities, techniques, and technologies to optimize your success and well-being? Welcome to the Focus to Evolve podcast where we'll illuminate your path to spacious productivity and balanced thriving. Each week, we dive into deeply insightful and immediately impactful methods to help you become highly effective while promoting health, profitability, and well-being. Say goodbye to the trance of busyness and hello to your highest potential. It's time to discover a new way of accelerating your mission, growth, and purpose. Join us on the Focus to Evolve podcast and get ready to live your most joyful, productive, and fulfilling life.